In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create an animation in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to tackle a question that came up on the Discord server about animations, and essentially talking about how to create a visual representation of how a part goes together. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this rotiform wheel from one of our previous series, and you can go to the description of the video and download the data set. And we're going to talk about creating a basic animation with a handful of components. Now, the first thing that's important to note is that you must have components in your design. And the way that this one is broken up is we've got a lip for the front and the rear, and then we've got a hub, we've got the tire, and then we've got a hardware. Now the hardware contains just bodies, which means I'm going to move them all together as one. That's perfectly fine, just to simplify the process here. In reality, each of those fake bolts, now in reality the rotiform wheel has real bolts, but in this case the fake bolts would all be their own components, but then we'd have to move them all individually. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this assembly and we're going to create an animation of how it would go together. So to do that, we'll navigate to the animation workspace. Now, when you first come in here, it's going to start with a clean timeline at the bottom, and this is called the canvas. So anytime we are moving things around in the canvas area, that's the, the entire Fusion screen, it's going to capture it here. So for example, if I move this up, it's going to capture a camera icon. And if we play this back, it's just moving up over that one second. I'm going to select that and delete it. The first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how we can get the object oriented properly. So we could right click and delete, or you can hit delete on the keyboard, and then take this marker here and drag it into what's called the scratch zone. This allows us to move things around and rotate it and determine what we want to see on the screen before we ever start recording. Another way that we can do this is we can pause recording the view. Now this is a little bit different than going into the scratch zone. It doesn't really let us get the object in a good starting point. All it really does is it stops capturing the camera view and lets you rotate things around. So once we're happy with this, I also want to expand the components and I'm gonna start by hiding everything I don't wanna see. I don't wanna see any of the hardware, the tires or the front and rear lip, but I wanna go one step further. I also don't want them all to be in their assembled position. So I'm gonna expand them out first. The tire is fine where it is, and I'm gonna just leave that there, but just hide it. The lips for the rim, I'm gonna use transform component. I'm gonna take this front one here, and I'm gonna pull it forward a distance of 10 inches. I'm gonna left click in the canvas, which will allow me to keep that tool on. I'm gonna pull this one back a distance of 10 inches as well. It's just something I can remember easily. I'm gonna left click. And then the hardware, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out further. So we're going to go all the way out to 20 inches for the hardware, left click, and then we can OK the transform, hide the hardware, hide the front lip, and hide the rear lip. Now that we have all of that done, I can drag the playhead out into the timeline and determine where I want to start those actions. So all it knows right now is that we've got the hub visible and we've already moved all those other components to their location so we can animate it going together. So we have to decide how we want to put this thing together. The first thing that I'm going to do is show the rear lip. You can see that instantly puts this light bulb icon, which shows that it's off all the way up until one second, and then it's on for the rest of this time. So if I just play through, it's just going to appear. Now to make that happen a little bit smoother, we're going to left click on this, then we'll right click and change the duration. Now I'm going to make this a little bit longer. I'm going to go all the way to 2.0. And you'll notice that as soon as I do that, it's giving me an error. It wants me to, to actually have that decimal place in there, so it needs to be 2.0, and then we'll say okay. Now if I play this back, go all the way to the beginning and play this back, it's now gonna fade in more gradually, and it's going to start at one second, and it's gonna take that two seconds that I put, it's gonna go one before and one after. You can see it goes all the way up to three, and it starts at zero, but it's really, it's fading this entire time. So. I also want to make sure that at that three seconds, it's in its correct position. So I'm gonna select the rear lip, I'm gonna to go to transform components, and I'm gonna move it forward that 10 inches that we moved it back, and I'm gonna say okay. Notice that this starts from zero, so I'm gonna go ahead and start playing this, and it's moving in as that transition is happening. So it's bringing it in. Now obviously we can change this as much as we want. 
I can decide that this needs to happen over one second and just restructure it, play through, and then it's going to move a bit quicker after it becomes visible. Now, it just depends on what you're looking for in your animations. We're gonna repeat this process, and now we want to show the front lip and once again, I'm gonna change the duration at which that transitions in. Instead of doing two, this time I'm gonna do 1.5. I'm gonna say okay. And then I also want to move it into position. So right where it's completely visible at four and a half seconds, I'm gonna to go to transform components and move it back that 10 inches. I'm gonna say okay, and play through once more. So once again, the rear lip starts to come, moves forward. The front one's a little different because it's fading and moving at the same time. So again, it just depends on the visuals that you're looking for. Now, I like to do stuff like this, especially when the object that's coming into focus is in front of something else. You kind of leave it opaque for a little bit longer, and then it you know, kind of comes into place. Now I'm gonna go a little bit further in my timeline, about five and a half seconds, and then I wanna show the hardware. Now the hardware, again, I want this to fade in a little bit, so duration, going to do one and a half, but I also want it to be moving while it's fading in because I don't want to see it the whole time. So once again, it's selected. I'm going to move it back that 20 inches that we've moved it in and say, okay. So once more, let's go ahead and play through. We've got the rear lip coming in, the front one coming in, and the hardware comes in and goes into the rest of the object. The last thing we need to do is turn the tire on. Now the tire itself, you can scroll up and down in this timeline and you can resize it if you need to, but the tire itself can be coming in the entire time. So we can make this quite a bit longer if I say 4.5 and say okay, and then start to drag it back so that it ends at the same time. If I play through, the tire is gonna start fading in quite a bit sooner, and then you can see that it's completely there at the very end. Now if we wanted to shorten that up, we can also manually resize this and play it back so that it's not fading that entire time. Once again, you can play around with this even after you create it, you can sort of restructure it to make the most sense. The last thing that I wanna do now that I have uh, this sort of in place is I'm going to just go ahead a couple seconds. I'm gonna rotate this around manually and it really doesn't matter where it goes to, it's gonna be the end position. And you can see that it captures that camera. So I'm not gonna play the whole thing back. We'll go to about five seconds and from here, the tire is fading in, the hardware is going in, and as that's happening, it's rotating around to another view. There are additional settings. If you go down to the very bottom, this gear icon, you can see that there are some recording modes that automatically will determine how each of these things get stacked. They can all start at the same time, they can overlap by half a second, or they could be sequential in nature. There's also this full screen mode that allows a playback and we do have the ability to put all the components back how they started relatively easily. Uh, so again, there are a couple of additional settings that you can play around with to determine how things are moving around. Now we didn't play with everything inside of here. We just really took a look at a couple of things, but that should be the basis that you need to create a basic animation. A couple of things that you do wanna think about after the fact is there are transform options that happen automatically things like auto explode all levels, which means if you have subcomponents, it'll explode everything. Auto explode one level, restore home will allow us to go back to the home position where everything started, and we have manual explode. I prefer transform, it gives me a little bit more control over the way things move, but you do have that ability. You can also change things like the appearances and show hide, it's essentially what we did by just toggling on the visibility. If we were to create a new storyboard, you can just hit the plus icon down here at the very bottom and you can add a new storyboard. And again, you can go to transform and restore home, put everything back how it started. The way that you want to think about sharing out your animations is a little bit limited in Fusion 360, unfortunately. We basically have two options. One is we can publish the video, which will allow us to basically pick the size of the output and then it will create an AVI for you. The other way is to create a share link. So if you go to share and you create a link and share this with others, when they view it in A360 or online, you'll be able to see the animations just like you can see simulation and generative results and cam toolpaths. So all that stuff will be available and you can sort of filter through and look at it. 
If you have any questions on this, please let me know. It's about as far as I want to go with this example. But once again, it should be enough to get pretty much anybody started on a basic animation. But like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you want to join the Discord server, please send me an email, support at kajicator.com. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.